Hey everybody, Jace Allen here from Rum Runner Guitars, and today we're back building guitars with a CNC machine using Vectric Aspire, and today is part two of that multi-part series, and today we are going to be setting our tool paths and creating our G-code file so that we can send that to our CNC machine to cut out our guitar body. So, Welcome aboard and stick around. Okay, welcome back to part two of our series on building guitars with CNC machines using Vetric Aspire and my CNC machine, which is a Sciency Long Mill 30 by 30. And on episode one, we showed you how to design your guitar. And what we did was we took a, a vintage Stratocaster uh, plans that we got free off the internet from uh, the Guitar Herald. And uh, we put that into Aspire and broke it down into layers and now we're going to create the tool paths that tell the CNC machine the depths to cut and what types of cuts to make and whatnot. So let's dive right in. So we'll bring up your file from the last episode and you're going to want to, let's start with the pins. I think that's probably a good place to start. So select your pins, come up here to tool paths, and you're going to want to drill, and that is this one here, drilling tool path. Click on that. Now the problem here is a lot of the router bits, the mills, end mills they call them, I think mine is two and two and a half inches long, I think you can get them three inch. Anyway, you want to you want the longest bit you can get because your your you know the thickness of your material for the guitar body is an inch and three quarters. Uh, sometimes you'll have a work surface that's maybe a half inch, quarter inch, like your waste board, and you're gonna you want to drill down into that, and you don't want your your drill to bottom out. Basically, the collet will hit the the material, and then because you, you want you want to place your material where it's going to go and then drill those holes through the material and through into the wasteboard and then we're going to put these metal pins into those holes so you could probably purchase an actual milling CNC drill bit I mean I don't think it's a like a regular drill bit I think they're specific for the CNC mills I had pretty good luck just using my quarter inch end mill bit. So that's what I'm going to do. So we're going to do back to tool paths. I'm going to come down, let's see, so an inch and three quarters plus three eighths, two and an eighth. So we're going to come here and do two and an eighth. And that's about as deep as you can go with the bits that I have. And I actually, I won't put them all the way up into the collet. I'll keep them down a little bit so there's plenty of drill bits sticking out. Okay, so we'll call these pinholes. And what it does is it, uh, let's see, is this the one? Yes. You want to use peck drilling. <laughs> peck, like a bird pecks. It'll come down, drill a little bit, come up. And that allows the dust to get pulled out. Uh, I think if you use an upcut bit, it'll pull that dust out. I use a downcut bit when I'm cutting the guitar body out. So, you know, if you want to start with an upcut bit on the drill holes, you can and then change it afterwards. So what it'll do is it'll it'll drill down a little bit, come up, drill back down, so it doesn't just go brrr, drill down through, because then you it burns and you get you know the dust compacts in there so you want to make sure you use this peck drilling 
and the options are retract above the cutting start depth or retract above the height of the previous pass. I like to retract above the start depth because the action from the drill bit in the you know the spinning creates a little bit of a of a wind or a vacuum. Not, probably not a vacuum, but anyway, it, it helps to pull that dust out, especially if you're using a down cut bit like I do. And then everything else I would just leave where it is. And we calculate. And then you get this little warning, of course. It says, hey, you're going to drill into your uh, waste board, which is what we want. And uh, then it's going to show you your 3D preview. I'm going to do the tool pass in order of how I want them cut. And I cut the body uh, shape last. And you'll understand why when you see it. So we'll do a neck pocket first. Okay, so you're going to want to come over here to Pocket Tool Path. Click on that. Uh, we're going to be using a quarter inch end mill. And our depth, okay, so this is where that other file that I told you about comes in handy, that other PDF file. And i got to find it. And there it is. Fender Stratocaster 62, the PDF from Electric Herald. If you double-click that... And you will see a mess of dimensions, radiuses. This is a, basically a blueprint schematic of the Stratocaster body. And this is the vintage, see down here it says Body Vintage Stratocaster 1962. And they do a real good job of keeping this up to date. I think this comes from a Stratocaster group. There's also one for Telecasters and whatnot. So anyway, this shows you your cutting depths for all your pockets. If you zoom in and come down here, this is a, a profile view, a side view, and this is your neck pocket. And they are calling out a 0.594 uh, depth for the neck pocket. Um, I happen to have a test pocket that I did here and I tested this to uh, a fender made in Mexico fender neck and uh, an American uh, was it American standard anyway American made neck and I found that those necks sat too high in that depth pocket and if you research a little bit online I'm going to turn this thing on you will find that Depths are a little bit deeper than the 0.59. And so this one is about 0.658. And that's what we're going to use because that fits perfect. So, But most of our other depths, except for the pickup pocket, are going to be accurate on this plan so so we've got pocket toolpath end mill when I say 0. 0.658 and everything else and then we're going to call this neck pocket calculate and it jumps to the 3d view but We'll, we'll view that after a bit. And then we want to come over here to the pickup pocket toolpath. Back to pocket toolpath. And here, I think I went three, or uh, maybe five. Yeah, I, I think I do this the same depth as the neck pocket. So if you go back to your uh, schematic here, you'll see that this is actually shallower in the uh, vintage style than the neck but what I found when I cut out this vintage to the vintage specs uh, the pickups that I had just I mean they just barely fit in there and, and if the screw posts stick down a little farther they will hit the bottom and if you have a pickup with a magnet instead of the El Nico pickup with the poles that are magnetic 
that'll bottom out and you won't be able to fit your uh, pickups and your um, scratch plate on top. So I make this the same depth as the neck. So we're going to come in tool pass. It's the same and we'll go pick up, oops, pick up pocket. Okay, then we do this here, which is our control pocket, same deal, back up here, pocket tool path, and then here we're going to want to reference our uh, drawing, and that pocket is over here, control pocket, and you can see it's inch and a half, and then your jack, output jack pocket, is also inch and a half, so we'll come back here. And we will go inch and a half. And we will call that control pocket. Oop. And okay, good. And then the jack, uh, jack pocket. Same thing. Jack, inch and a half, jack pocket. Okay, and then finally we have the bridge pocket, tremolo, bridge tremolo pocket. And we'll do the same thing, pocket tool path. Uh, t -t 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 bridge, or yeah, bridge, I'll call it bridge, bridge pocket. And this one, you're only going to have to come down, if you go to your plan here, you'll see that it's 0.19 deep so we'll cut I don't know quarter inch quarter inch bridge pocket calculate okay all right and then you can also under tool paths whoops go here to preview tool paths which is where we were <laughs> And then preview all sides, and it shows you your sort of 3D. Okay. All right, so then we'll do our body toolpath. And then this is going to be a profile toolpath. And we're going to go 1 and uh, 7 eighths deep so that we cut through the wood because uh, we're going to go all the way through and then we a quarter inch mill uh, and then tabs are very important you want to add these little tabs that it leaves a little piece of wood so that it you know your uh, you know when it's cutting out the body profile and then it gets to the end where it's free then it doesn't you know that's why it's good to do the body profile last because then all your routes are complete and then that's the last thing. So we'll add tabs. I do a, a, a 3 8 inch wide tab, 8 inch thick. And you go edit tabs and it brings up a little toolbar and you can just throw a few tabs on here. And those will get sanded down. That's probably good. And then we'll call this body profile. Make sure things right. And you want to machine vectors, you want to cut to the outside of the line. Uh, that's I think that's by default. And that should be it. That's all I mess with. And then it gives you the warning again, of course. So just hit OK. OK. All right, so now we flip the body, oops, right here, toggle top and bottom. Okay, so we do that. So then we'll do this uh, piece. That is a pocket. That is going to be 0.625 deep, so 5 eighths. Where am I? There I am. 5 eighths, 625. And then we'll call that spring pocket. And back.
back to 2D. And finally, this is a pocket. End mill, quarter inch end mill, same, all the same. I don't use an eighth inch until we get into the carving of the uh, arm and belly cutouts. So what is this? The depth here says, okay, it's basically 0.19 away from the entire depth of the body. So we'll do 175 minus 0.19. 1.56. So we'll make that 1.56. And we'll call that trim pocket. There we go. Uh, I like to reset the preview. And I like to preview all sides. And there you go. And see, these are your tabs. Let's see that. There you go. That's the easy part. <laughs> now we got to move on to the more difficult part, which is creating the 3D. That's why I'm using Aspire, because Aspire does 3D modeling, carving. And so we're going to take a, a file which I will provide for you because it'll be way easier that way. And we'll create the arm cutout and the belly cutout. So move right on to that. So now we're going to create the arm contour and belly contour 3D carvings. And I'm providing two files for you. They are 3D clip files for a spire that I created uh, and, you, and you can download those that there will be links in the description and download those and you want to go to import import component 3d model and you want to select the arm cutout strat 3d clip import there it is you might need to position it move it around where you want it Come over here to tool paths, 3D roughing tool path. Oops. And I'm using a quarter inch end mill for the rough out arm contour. Calculate. And then we go back to tool paths. And here, 3D finishing tool path. So you're going to do two passes, basically a rough cut, and then using a ball nose. I use an eighth inch. You can use a quarter inch. Might make it faster. And uh, we're going to do the 3D finish arm contour. Calculate. And if you reset your preview, preview all sides, you'll get a nice preview of that contour and it looks pretty good it looks pretty good there's a little line here but that should be okay because you're gonna see you're gonna use your router bit hand router out the contour you know, the radius corner radius all the way around and you might have to blend some of this in with the sanding but that should look fine. And then we'll flip around to the back. We'll go file import, import component 3D model, belly cutout 3D clip. Position that where we want it. Right about there looks good. Tool paths. Somebody's texting me. Uh, 3D rough. 3D uh, quarter inch uh, end mill, 3D rough belly contour. Calculate that. Back to 3D finish tool path, 3D finish belly contour. Again, using a eighth inch ball 
nose end mill calculate and then we will preview all sides again okay and then see how this has got quite a groove in it that means the model is setting a little too deep so I want to come over here 2d view click on this come over here to the modeling tab and then come down here to belly cutout strat highlight that right click it go to properties see here this shape height base height and I believe it's the base height that you want to uh, adjust I'm gonna go eighth inch close go back to your 3d view go to toolpaths uh, reset preview actually you want to uh, uh, recalculate all oops error model thickness exceeds material thickness should be yeah so you can see that it's it's not quite level let's try this again properties shape height I wonder if we need to lower our shape height let's try a little bit smaller 0 0625 16th of an inch close to a pass tools successfully okay sixteenth of an inch should be good and then we'll try it again preview all sides I think that looks a little better. Yeah, that looks a little better. I think it could go up a little bit more. That's one of those things you might have to play with a little bit to get it right where you want it. But if you go to properties, I think the reason this it gave me that error was something to do with the shape height. You can change that to If you get it up over your height of your material, I think it complains. Let's do let's do it really needs to be an eighth of an inch. Let's try eight and seven five. Because we really want to get that gap out of there. You always want to recalculate because what that does is anything that's moved. Okay, it looks like we're good. Reset preview, preview all sides. That's better. That's way better. So that was an eighth of an inch lift on that contour see how it's not quite as deep now see so, so when you do this you'll be able to sand sand that over and you're going to want to do you're going to have to do a little bit of manual work on this anyway because the way this because your radius you run your uh radius i think it's a eighth inch maybe we'll we'll cover that when we cut the body out and do that so I hope that wasn't too confusing, but you just want, want to make sure you get that. Because 
uh, Aspire is pretty amazing. Kind of what you see on the screen is what you're going to get. So you will definitely see that little tool, tool mark there. But you should be able to sand that, sand that down. Okay, so there we go. There's our body, uh, arm contour, belly contour. And we have a finished finished model. So we'll save this. And then what we're going to do, we've created our tool paths. And now we need to export everything. And so you want to come here to save tool path. And oops. Okay, this is this is top and bottom. Oh, no, I'm on the there you go. So you want to go to the top. And then you want to click pinholes. And then you want to save toolpath as selected toolpath. And then you can see toolpaths to be saved, pinholes, drill, quarter inch. And then uh, for my CNC machine, which is a science -y long mill, uh, I'm using GRBL inch G code as the post processor. And your it your machine may vary. I'm going through oh what is it? I don't even remember now because it's on my laptop out in the garage to send my CNC files, my G code to the to the computer. But anyway, that's what you're gonna want. So we'll do the pinholes as a separate file. So pinholes, G code, because that's the first thing we're going to cut. And then we're going to do, uh, uh, let's see, neck, pickup, control pocket, jack pocket, first, body profile. Last. Oh wait, body profile is like seriously last. So we're gonna do rough. So these are all the same. Uh, oops. Yep, quarter inch end mill. Those are all the same. So we want those visible. So neck pocket, pickup pocket, control pocket, jack pocket, bridge pocket, 3D roughing, arm contour. So save those all together. And you can just call it top quarter inch end mill. So that'll be all the parts of the top except the body contour. Okay. Then you want to flip around to the back. And you want to do your spring pocket, trim pocket and belly rough as one file. Visible tool pass. Okay, save tool pass. We'll call it back quarter. Back quarter inch. Okay. So then, oops, I'm gonna flip around again. And you want to just pick 3D finish and say, I wonder if I can f select that and, nope. So we'll do arm, 3D finish arm contour as a path. That's going to be an eighth inch bit. And then we'll flip. Do belly finish, belly finish contour, save toolpath. Do the belly finish contour. Okay, and then last but not least, we will do the body profile. Okay, so what's going to happen 
is oops, let me get back to the 3D view here. Okay, so what's gonna happen is <clears throat> we're gonna set our blank on our work surface, get it where we want it, and I'm just gonna run a couple screws into it. And we're gonna run these holes down through the work surface or through the blank into the uh, spoil board. Okay, and then we'll take the screws out, pull the blank off, put our pins in the work surface, set the blank on top. So now we have registration pins, everything will line up good. So then I like to start on the back first and I run this contour or this pocket this pocket and this rough then I switch to the eighth inch ball nose run this finish so the back is done then you flip it onto those pins horizontally and then the uh, program will cut Neck pocket, pickup pocket, control pocket, jack pocket, bridge pocket, rough arm. Then you switch out to the eighth inch again, do the fine, the finish part of the arm, and then you do the cut. And it leaves the pin or the tabs, and then then you're done. Then you lift it off, break those tabs out. And then you can sand those down and then we'll take our manual router and do the radius and I'll show you how to do all those too. So there you go. That's the plan. So now episode or uh, part three will be actually cutting. We're going to put the material on our CNC and let her rip. So we'll see you next time. Thank you.